In section 4.7, we are looking at Newton's method. So to get us started here, let's make a little love note to ourselves that Newton's method is used to approximate the solutions, which are also our roots or our zeros, of the equation f of x is equal to zero by using tangent lines and a sequence of approximations. So to better understand this method, let's look at the, in the graphical interpretation first. So we want to suppose we want to approximate the solution of f of x is equal to zero, and suppose that we found an initial approximation at x naught. So using x equals x naught, we want to sketch a tangent line to the curve f at this point x equals x naught. So we know how to do this. So we have this point on the line. Right, when x is x naught, y would be f of x naught. We also know how to find the slope of a tangent line using the derivative. So I have the slope of said line is equal to the derivative evaluated at x naught. And so taking this point and our slope, we can find the tangent line to the curve at x naught using the point slope formula. And let's give ourselves a little bit more room. So we can say that f of x minus f of x naught is equal to m, or our slope, f prime at x naught multiplied by x minus x naught at our linearization formula. And so we can solve for the tangent line by solving for f of x. And I'm actually going to go ahead and rewrite this down below so we have a little bit more room. So let's pull this equation of our tangent line, our linearization at x naught. And we'll pull it down here. So the tangent line, which we can see is the, the blue graph here, is defined by the formula f of x is equal to f prime at x naught multiplied by x minus x naught plus f of x naught. So here is our tangent line, and we sketch a graph of this tangent line to the curve at this point x naught. So now looking at this graph, we realize that the point where our tangent line crosses the x-axis is actually closer to the zero that we want. So what this tells us to do is let's use, we're now going to use this x-intercept x sub 1 to approximate the 0. And so how are we going to do this? Well, we need to use the equation of our tangent line here and our x-intercept. So we know that we have this x-intercept, or the coordinates of our x-intercept, x, y. So here we are letting x be x sub 1 and y be 0. And we're going to substitute them into the tangent line. So we substitute into the tangent line we just found. Alright, so the tangent line that is given to us above is f of x is equal to f prime of x naught multiplied by x minus x naught plus f evaluated at x naught. And again, we are going to replace x and y, or x and f of x here, with x sub 1 and 0. So plugging these values in, this becomes 0 is equal to f prime at x naught multiplied by x sub 1 minus x naught plus f of x naught. And from here, we now want to go ahead and solve for x sub 1. So we use this equation to solve for x sub 1, and I'm going to rewrite this as 
So just bringing all of our terms back to the left-hand side here, I've got f prime of x dot multiplied by x minus x naught plus f of x naught is equal to zero and solve for x sub one. So this leaves us with, we have f prime of x naught multiplied by x sub one minus x naught is equal to minus f of x naught Actually, we'll keep our graph there so we can draw our, our second tangent line. So then dividing both sides by f prime of x naught, we have x sub 1 minus x naught is equal to negative f evaluated at x naught all over the derivative of our function evaluated at x naught. And then last but not least, we'll add x naught to both sides. So I'm left with x sub 1 is equal to negative f evaluated at x naught all divided by the derivative evaluated at x naught plus x naught. And so we can use this formula here to find an, another approximation as long as the derivative is not equal to zero. So we use this to find the next better approximation with each estimation, we get closer and closer to a better approximation. So we use this to find the next or better approximation, right, as we should say, as long as the derivative does not equal zero. Otherwise, it would be undefined. And if we want here, we can go ahead up back at our graph and draw ourselves a tangent line to the curve at x naught and passing through our zero, which would produce our next approximation, or in this case, the exact value. So let's look at the procedure now. I want to explore the procedure, or the more formal procedure, for Newton's method. So to find the solutions, or the zeros, or the roots of a curve, using Newton's method, we follow the following strategy. So step number one, we want to make an initial guess. And so this, our initial guess, is simply x dot. It's not a very good guess, necessarily, but it's just our starting point. Next, given this function f of x, we compute the derivative to find the slope, and then we find that tangent line at that guess. And we just saw this with our graphical interpretation. This tangent line is defined as y minus f of x naught is equal to the slope, which is the derivative evaluated at our guess x naught, multiplied by x minus x naught. So then if we go ahead now in step three, we solve for the x-intercept to attain that next approximation. So to do this, we let y be equal to zero and solve for x sub one. Right, and in our graphical interpretation, again, we literally plugged the ordered pair x sub one, zero, into our tangent line from step two, and we ended up attaining that x sub one was equal to our initial point x naught, our initial approximation, minus the function evaluated at x naught, all over the derivative evaluated at x naught. And then we continue this process, or we repeat this process, to attain the next approximation. And so let's suppose we did this one more time. So again, we're going to let y be equal to 0. And this time, we're going to solve for x sub 2. So here, we would plug in the x-intercept using the coordinates x sub 2, 0. And we would find that x sub 2 is equal to x sub 1 minus f of x sub 1, all divided by the derivative evaluated at f of x sub 1. Or excuse me, the derivative evaluated at x sub 1. And we will, last but not least, we're going to continue this process until we've reached the desired accuracy. So we continue this method until a desired accuracy has been met. 
So typically you will be asked to find an accuracy through to several decimal places. So again, we always start here with our tangent line at our initial guess. We use the tangent line to approximate x sub 1. We then use this x sub 1 to approximate x sub 2. And we continuously use this formula until we reach a desired accuracy. So let's explore this.